all the veterans have been in every single role at a World Cup, whether it's, you know, a, a starter, a game changer, um, getting minutes, not getting minutes. And so I thought it was really cool that they kind of opened up and were like, we've been through all of it. So, like, if anyone's feeling any type of way, like, come to us and talk to us. It's Rog and things are getting serious. The United States are charging into their final group stage game of the 2023 World Cup with their fate very firmly in their own hands. And it is a joy to spend time and this moment of moments with America's fullback, the 2021 NWSL first overall draft pick, I Stoke Milt Latty Fiend, Ofs, the pride of Ashburn, Virginia, a stone's throw away from Crystal City, the city named after the great Crystal Dunn. It's a joy to welcome, live from Auckland, New Zealand, for Direct From Down Under, presented by Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy, from your North Carolina courage and US women's national team, it's Emily Fox. Hello, Raj. <laughs> <laughs> is it true? I need to know this first up. Was it a childhood dream of yours representing the US national team? Yeah, I think it was. Um, I also, I did a lot of sports growing up. So I also did gymnastics, I did basketball, I did swimming, I did cross country. Um, I did ballet. So this is just the beginning of many possible gold medals for the Fox <laughs> family. I love it. But I also love that you have made this particular dream come true right now in New Zealand. How does the reality match up to everything you've dreamed about? I mean, I don't think you can prepare for this. You know, I think obviously you have your dream of what it's going to look like. But then, yeah, being here, being in this environment, it's been amazing. Um, it was really cool with New Zealand too, having the traditional welcoming from New Zealand. That was really cool. And then, yeah, just being in this country and then hopefully going to Australia. It's been amazing. You talk about yourself as highly competitive, but this US women's team, it's known for its code, the mindset required to thrive that's passed down one generation to the next. How long did it take you to fit into the culture of the US team? And which veterans gave you the best guidance as you carved out your place in the group dynamic? Yeah. Um, you know, I think the camp in November when we went to Australia and we played Australia twice, those games were very aggressive, hard games to play against, hard opponents to play against. So I think then is when I really like had to have and became part of that U.S. mentality of like winning my battles on the field, making sure no one gets by me and yeah, doing anything I can to contribute and help the team win. Um, and I think with that, for players that helped me, I mean, you have Becky Sauerbrunn, Lindsay, there's so many players that I could that I could list off. I think in that November camp, it was more some new players trying in. So I think we all really had to like, like you said, like develop that mentality um, and go from there. How is being in camp, you know, this surreal reality where you're all stuck together, there's the adrenaline of the games, surrounded by a lot of time, a lot of boredom occasionally to kill. What surprised you about it? I actually think I haven't been very bored. Um, I've been pretty busy. We, we have a lot of things that we can be doing, whether it's like recovery, treatment, watching video. So I've actually been surprised with like how quick the days have gone by and how I am always kind of finding things to do, so. You're yeah. a founding member of the US Women National Team's Kindle Club, right? A lot, <laughs> a lot of readers on this team, and I know you adore a heavy dose of science fiction. Word is you got book recommendations direct from Becky Sowerby. Yeah, we, I'm trying to think when we, we found out that we both liked kind of the fantasy, like not very realistic books, <laughs> um, which makes it so fun. But, but yeah, we started talking one dinner and found out we liked the same books, read the same books. And then the Kindle Club came along because especially with like fantasy books, they're like 400 to like 600 pages long. So they're very thick. Um, so I needed to get a Kindle for, for camp and for the travel and especially for the World Cup. What did Becky recommend to you? She recommended... I believe it's called The Circus Night. I've read that. The Daughter of No Worlds. 
Um, we both have read like Akatar, which is a court of thorns and roses, which is really popular in the team right yeah, now. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Um, the court of thorn and rose Lavelle's. The, uh, the answer is always Megan Rapinoe's autobiography, Emily, is always the right <laughs> answer when we're talking about books. But let's talk about the, the World Cup games themselves. And the first game, the Vietnam match. How did you feel walking out of the tunnel onto the field, Emily? Do you, do you get nervous before games? Was this, was this more nervous, the same nervous, the normal games? This been a World Cup game. How would you handle it? Yeah, um... I do get nervous for every game I play, whether it's here or at home. I always get nerves, but again, I think it's a good thing for me. It shows to me that I care and want to do everything I can to win and to help the team. So, but yeah, I mean, for my first World Cup game, definitely extra nervous, extra excited. It's hard to capture in one moment, but yeah, walking out onto the stadium and like seeing all the fans and and playing my first game was so exciting. But then at the same time, you have to be in the moment and be ready to to play. So What do you do with fear, Emily Fox? What's your mantra? With fear. Um I mean, I think for me when I'm feeling nervous, I I try to like channel it into excitement. Um, and tell myself again that like, I'm nervous because I care and I want to do well and that's okay. Like to be nervous is fine. And in terms of fear, I, I mean, I think a lot of it is just being able to take breaths, to calm yourself down, um, and to have like mantras that, that you can do this and that you just need to get your first touch first pass, make it clean, um, and go from there. God, I love your approach to calming breaths. I like to try and make myself hyperventilate. <laughs> but during the national anthem, I mean, it was amazing watching you, Emily. You had this laser-focused look in your eyes. Did notice right before it started, you also couldn't help but, but crack a smile, almost like, oh, my Lord, this is really happening. You know, you were. am I really about to play for my nation in a World Cup? And when I watched that, I found it so bloody meaningful to watch someone who'd really dreamed of doing something since they were a kid, who'd really ground, who, you know, there were moments of struggle and real, you know, rehab, and you were making that dream real. What emotions inside you were you feeling in that moment? I think at that moment, um, I was kind of going through a checklist, just, you know, thinking of our game plan, thinking of what I needed to do to to help my team win and to be successful during this game. Um, again, like I said, like calming myself down. Um, yeah, just kind of going through what I needed to do in order to to help the team win against Vietnam that day. Can we talk about the Netherlands game? Because I'm fascinated to talk through your experience of it, Emily. The 60th minute, Lindsay Horan, the incredible Lindsay Horan, taking the foul from Van der Donk, fighting fire with fire, or at least mm -hmm. a few choice words, and then delivering vengeance with a Colorado forehead of justice. It was really, it's an incredible moment of skill and power and barely control fury on the field. What was your view on the whole incident from start to finish? Because it was like epic biblical level moment of reward and punishment. Yeah, I mean, I was next to the ball with Rose. So I think we were kind of wondering what was happening because it was taking a while to kind of get, get the corner going. Um, so yeah, we were just waiting. But, you know, I think being out there with Rose, you could tell that like she didn't, you know, let the time and the lagging like uh, get to her in terms of like her concentration and what she needed to do to execute. Um, and then, yeah, I think when she played that ball, it went back in the net. I mean, it was such a powerful moment. And again, like just energetic. And after that, I think all of us were like, we need to get another one. So, yeah. I don't know how you say F around and find out in Dutch, but it was as if Van der Donk brought out Dark Haran, whom I love. And what I admired about the performance was the resilience, the perseverance. I spoke to Becky Sauerbrunn at the final whistle, and she said that her message in the locker room would be, we had to work hard. No one said this tournament would be easy. Everything's still in our hands. We'll find our form. What message did you take out of it? The second half 
we dominated. And I think that was really positive, being able to come back um, from the goal and to get the tie. So I think, you know, us being able to go into halftime and talk and fix and implement what we wanted to change was great. And then, but at the same time, you know, I think we were hungry for one more goal. Um, but again, I mean, it's a tournament. You got to move on um, from the game you played and start focusing on the next one within a few days. So take the positives and move on. There was relief, but there was also disappointment in the best way that you didn't finish them off. Yeah, because, I mean, we're always going to have, you know, the highest standards. And, you know, Netherlands is a great team and they definitely tested us. And so, yeah, I think with that, we learn from that game and we learn from that opportunity to be behind a goal and have to work back up, but then move on and, and again, strive for for the best. Up next, as you say, Portugal, the final game in the group stages with two games into this tournament. It's your first World Cup, first campaign for 14 members of this squad. What key lessons or insights about World Cup play have you gleaned from the first 180 minutes that you now hope to apply for the rest of the journey? I think, again, with the amount of experience that we have and a lot of our players, um, they did a great job of, you know, us getting together before the games and just kind of prepping us. And I mean, I think we all knew that every game was going to be hard and the importance of focusing on each game um, that lies ahead of us. So all of our focus is on Portugal. Um, but yeah, that it's not going to be easy. Um, every game is going to be a battle and just get after it and have a strong mentality. And if we need tackles, if we need whatever we need to like bring it and to bring it to the best of your ability. Yeah. Emily, there's so much I do admire about your play. Um, and off the field, I loved how last year you talked about how you started working with a sports psychologist so that you could stay more present using routines to stay centered, to control the things that you can control, you know, releasing from yourself from what you can't by trying to do more things that you love going for walks, getting your oatmeal lattes, 20 minute power naps, which honestly sound exquisite right now. For me, it would probably be cracking a can of Bud Light, but can you talk about that work that you've done and the lessons you've learned? And if there's anything you've done to stay grounded during the tumultuous crests and waves of a World Cup? I think a lot of it is, you know, we, we have such an amazing team and um, I think everyone has done a great job of just, you know, being cheerleaders for everyone and making sure everyone feels like welcomed and that they have each other's backs. And again, like all the veterans have been in every single role at a World Cup, whether it's, you know, a starter, a game changer, um, getting minutes, not getting minutes. And so I thought it was really cool that they kind of opened up and were like, we've been through all of it. So like if anyone's feeling any type of way, like come to us and talk to us. Um, so I thought that was really cool. And then we have, you know, my mom and dad are coming soon. So um, I'll be spending time with them. And, you know, family and friends are always great ways to kind of center you and to make you feel good. And um, yeah. In terms of the mental side of the game, do you ever do positive visualization before a match, imagining what you would like to happen before it does happen? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you see, Emily Fox? What do I see? I mean, really just the simple things, like depending on the game plan, what's being asked of me, like if I need to do, I don't know, if I need to do some type of cross, some type of pass, um, I'll envision that, just kind of see how it goes. And then, um, yeah, before games, I like to envision like walking out and how that feels um, to help, like you say, calm your nerves and kind of be in the moment. And then, um, yeah, just visualizing, like getting my touches, getting my passes, connecting, beating people, 1v1, defending 1v1. So kind of all of it. Do you ever, can you, can you visualize just pulling your foot back and just lashing it through the ball and just driving it into the top left corner? I'm just, just asking. I mean, yeah, I could for sure. <laughs> um, I mean, again, I think with what you said in terms of lessons learned i also think um like anyone can score in this tournament too um so yeah i definitely can can visualize that too emily fox we asked our listeners to send in questions for you we got a ton 
By the way, by far the most common were variations on a theme, including this one from Rachel in Bethesda, Maryland, who wrote, I love Emily. I think she's incredible. What is her skincare routine? What is my skincare routine? Okay. I'm just that's the very, messenger. No, that's very sweet. Thank you. Um, my skin ter- skincare routine. I, I wear sunscreen every day. I think the girls in camp are really good at that. So rain or shine, I'm putting sunscreen on. Um, that's a big one. I wash, I double cleanse at night. I don't wash my face in the morning. I have dry skin, so I'm always having lotion on it. Um, yeah. This is the crap America wants to know, Emily Fox. God bless, but always put the sun lotion on and then put make sure Rose Lavelle's got it on too. Last question for you, Emily. I mean, you have achieved your childhood dream by becoming a World Cup footballer. First of all, how do you sleep, by the way, in World Cups the night before games? Are you just like totally chill or are you just a up all night kind of person? I think I'm somewhere in between. You know, I definitely I definitely get some sleep. And again, like I have routines that help wind me down. Um, do, you dream, do you dream about football, Emily? Do I dream? Sometimes. Do you hear Flacco's I mean, voice? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. When I'm dreaming, I mean... I'm trying to think what dreams I have about. Fo- I mean, they're all sporadic and random, but yeah, sometimes I do. Do you um, have stress dreams about football ever? Yeah, I do. Me too. I Emily definitely Fox. do. I also like, hear Vladko's voice. You hear Vladko's <laughs> voice. Oh gosh! Like sometimes I'll have them where like I'm in a game or a practice, and like I'm in like sludge and I can't run. Or like move or something. Love those dreams. Love them. <laughs> Hello so. darkness, my old friend. What I wanted to ask you was, having achieved your dream, sincerely, what do you dream of now? I think with this dream, it it's a two part. You know, I think, um, you know, once I I got the call that I made the World Cup, um, I was like over the moon, so excited and happy about it. But then I was like, you know. I want to win the World Cup and I want to do everything I can to help this team win. Um, So I feel like it's not yet done. Um, And in terms of more goals, I mean, I I would love to be back here again. So, yeah. Godspeed. Miles to go before you sleep. Emily Fox, I raise my Bud Light in toast to you. You're someone who's made success look easy knowing at the same time just how much sacrifice, tenacity, and belief it's really taken all the while to you, to your team, to your family who are coming over, and to glory. Godspeed. Thank you. Listen to the full version of this podcast and all our podcasts wherever you get your pods. But first, subscribe here for more Men in Blazers videos and courage. Courage.